Here are three very closely related igneous rocks. Although they differ somewhat in tone, they're all darker. They're mafic in composition. This rock is fine-textured, aphanitic. We can't see individual crystals with the naked eye. It's uniformly solid, without any significant holes. Its name is simply basalt. This sample is also aphanitic, fine-grained. However, this rock exhibits holes. The technical term for these holes is vesicles. The vesicles represent cavities in which bubbles of vapor were trapped during solidification of the liquid lava. We named the rock for what it's mostly made of. So the name of this mafic, aphanitic rock is a basalt. Because of the presence of vesicles, however, we add the adjective vesicular. So the entire rock name becomes a vesicular basalt. A rule of thumb to remember is this. When there's more rock than holes, the sample will be heavier in weight for its size, and the rock will be called a vesicular basalt. This rock is also fine textured, aphanitic, and it's mafic in composition, so it's still a basalt. But note the overwhelming abundance of vesicles. So instead of calling this rock a vesicular basalt, this highly vesicular basalt is called scoria instead. Here's the rule of thumb for this rock. When there are more holes than rock, the sample will be lighter in weight for its size. That's when scoria is applicable rather than vesicular basalt. Remember, basalt is a fine-textured, mafic, igneous rock. Without the vesicles, all three rocks would be simply basalt. When there is more empty space than rock, scoria applies. More rock than bubbles? Vesicular basalt applies.